Java loop or Java streams, which is faster? If you are a Java developer writing code daily, the performance difference between Java stream and the for loop that you should aware of. I'm going to be proving it right away. So let's just get into the IDE. Consider a scenario that you have a list, maybe an array list, and inside that array list, you have a lot of names. So you have to write a method which will fetch each name from the list and going to find the length count of each name. And at last, it is going to sum off each name's length count and going to give me the result back. So let's just create a method. I'm going to write a method called public length count. And over here, the input is going to be a list and a list of string because it is going to contain names. So what we got to do, we have to write a for loop and we have to iterate over the names and we're going to be finding the each name and this is going to be a string and we're going to find the count of each name, name dot length. And this is going to return me an integer back. Now we're going to be doing this for each names, which is available inside the list. And at last we're going to sum it up, right? So I'm going to take a variable here, let's say int total length count, and I'm going to initialize that to zero. And here I'm going to sum it up total length count plus the length that I'm finding right now. And at last we can return this total length count. So I'm going to come over here out of this for loop and I'm going to return the total length count. Well, that's pretty much it. But just to make sure there are so many things going on inside this method, I'm going to introduce one more loop over here. Imagine a use case. We need to only do this operation. We only need to add the length count over here inside the total length count. If the length count is greater than less than seven. So maybe this operation we will only do if that is a if clause I'm knowingly going to introduce over here. And I'm going to say if this length is greater than let's say seven, then only do this operation and add this over here and that's it. Okay. So there is some filtration is also going on over here as well. So this is my length count method. So let's just simulate the exact same thing right now with Java H string. Let's just create another method, something like this right over here. And here I'm going to do the same thing over here with Java stream. So I have a list of names. I'm going to take that. I'm going to implement stream over here. I'm going to take each name that is coming in the stream. So I'm going to use a map function here. I'm going to take each name and I'm going to find the length of it. I'm going to take a name and I'm going to convert it to an integer by calling the length function. So I'm going to take a name and I'm going to return the length of that particular name. Okay. Once we find that we have a little bit of if clause over here as well. So we will write filter to do the filtration. I'm going to take each length count right now and then I will check if the length is greater than seven. Okay. Only if, if it is greater than seven, I'm going to add it off. Okay. So to do that, I can use a sum method. So I think I cannot use the sum method here. So maybe here I will use map to int just to make sure I can use the sum here. Okay. There you go. And this is going to return me command option V. Okay. It is going to return me the total sum over here. I will just log it. Okay. And that's it. And also I have to return this sum that I'm getting over here. So let me put that in return. So that's good. We are almost done. So this length count method, let's just change the name of the length count method. I'm going to add a stream over here and here I'm going to just add, let's say for each. Okay. So let's just do our testing. Well, we are not logging anything over here. So maybe before returning here also, I can log the total length count over here as well. Okay. And that's pretty much it. And I think we are good. Only one change I want to do. The list that I'll be passing over here is going to be huge. See this method, whenever I call this, I need to pass in a list, right? Uh, this list is not going to contain five or 10 elements. This list might have around let's say millions of elements, right? So in that case, whenever we are calculating the length and we are putting it over here as an integer, uh, the integer might go out of range. So let's just use long here. Okay. Instead of returning int, let's just use long. Okay. And here also let's just store the result as long and that will make sense. And we will return some over here. This is going to be a long and also here map to int. 
instead of that we can use map to long okay there you go this method also let's just return long okay and this variable also let's just change it to long and this one also let's just change it to long okay and that's pretty much it so we are we have fixed the method i think we're done with it let's just test this method okay so first of all let's just have a main method inside my main method first of all what i'm gonna do let's just call this method length count for each okay length count by using the for each and this is going to take a array list so we need to create a list we need to add a lot of names to this and we're going to be passing that list over here well i don't want to do that thing by myself let's just use a little bit of chat gpt to generate a list which can contain a lot of names over there so let's just go to chat gpt okay and let's just do a little bit of code generation right over here because i don't want to write that manually i'm gonna say this generate a method which will create random names okay let's just see what kind of code it is generating i think it is generating code in python well we don't want to have a method in python let's just tell it to create a method in java create a method in java which generates random names okay maybe what we can say have a list that contains first name okay and i'm gonna tell this have another well hold on hold on hold on hold on have a list that contains first name have a list that contains last name okay and then randomly generate names okay let's just see what kind of code it is giving well this looks good so it has a string array which has a lot of first name it has a string array which has a lot of last name and then it has a method called generate random names and is doing something over here but the method is just giving me a string which is kind of giving me a complete names like this this is what exactly I want. I want a random method which can generate a lot of names for me. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna copy this logic. Okay, and go to my IntelliJ. And over here, right after my main method, I'm gonna paste this. And right now, let's just use the for loop over here where it is iterating and uh, you know calling this method generate random name, which is this one which is generating it a lot of names like this, right? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna copy this for loop, control C, go back to my code. Let's just go to our main method. And right over here, I'll just drag this logic to down because I don't want to give a damn about this logic. This method, let's just test this. Well, I'm calling uh, the for loop and calling this generate random name. Let's just see whether it is able to generate a lot of random names. And yeah, it looks like it is giving a lot of random names over here. So right now what I'm gonna do, let's just remove this line. Here, I'm gonna create a list. That's a list of string names of new array list. And to this name list, instead of printing this, I'm gonna use this method right now to generate a random name and put this inside my list. So list.add, and I'm gonna put that generate random name over here okay looks good so right now my list is going to contain you know five number of names but i want to generate random names for 50000 time 5000 50000 maybe we can go 5 lakhs or maybe in millions something like this so right now i have 5 millions name has been pushed to this particular name list so which is good now let's just test this out now what i'm going to do Let's just use our length count for each method. Let's just come over here. Let's just call our method, so new test. Let's just create the object and call the length count for each, okay? And let's just pass in this names over here, okay? And let's just see how much time this takes to iterate this particular list, finding out each name, calculating each name length, then giving me the total length count whatever the names present over here inside this list, okay? And let's just check how much time that it takes. So I'm gonna say long start, and I'm gonna log the time over here, and I'm gonna do long end, and I'm gonna log the time over here, okay? And then I'm gonna find the difference between this time, and I'm gonna say, let's say total time taken 
and I'm going to put this and I'm going to say this is in millisecond. Okay, something like this and maybe I need to wrap this off with a bracket like this. Okay, it's all good. So right now, let's just try to run our method for our length count for each and let's just see how much time it takes. Well, it takes 71 millisecond with the help of for each loop to generate this one. Well, basically, we are right now calling this method right over here. Okay, and before and after that, we are logging time and checking like, you know, how faster this is or how much time it takes for 5 million records, let's just say. But this is not a very good way to test the you know, performance or benchmarking. We may need to go for different tools. But just to make sure we are finding a little bit of accurate result, what I'm going to do before I find the conclusion over here and log the time, um, I will call the same method one more time before all these things started. Okay, maybe right over here. I'll go to the previous line and I'll post this over here. And this one I want to do uh, because I want to do a little bit of warm up. I want JVM to wake up and calculate the length for everything for one time. And then once it picks the speed, I want to actually perform my actual task and I want to log the time over here. Let's just see whether we are getting any difference over here. Okay. Yeah, I think this is faster than before. Previously it was 71 or 72 millisecond. Right now it is 60 millisecond. So this is, I think, this is more faster than this. Maybe this warm up is required a little bit to wake my JVM up. I think we're all set. So it takes 60 milliseconds. So I'm gonna log this result. I'll, I'll do Control C, and I will comment this, um, you know, result over here. And this is for my for each. Okay. Now let's just run the same test for the Java stream. So maybe I'm gonna use my other method. Let's say length count using stream. And before this, we're going to do a little bit of warm up. What will happen if we'll not do any warm up? Let's just come in this, run this again. Let's just see how much time it takes. It just took 375 millisecond. With our for loop, it took 60 millisecond. Okay, let's just try to do some warm up over here as well. Let's just change this method to stream and let's just run this. Well, right now the result is around 63 millisecond, which is close because last time it was 60 millisecond for the for each loop, where it is 63 millisecond for the stream API. So I'm going to copy this and this is going to be my first observation. And this is with stream. So the stream is taking a little bit more time than compared to the for each loop. But as we go on and you know, add more and more intermediate operations over here. This might take a significantly more time than the for each loop. You can do that practice by yourself. And one more thing I want to show over here. Here I have used map to long. Okay. So there is no boxing and auto boxing is going on over here. And this is basically improving the performance. If it is simply a map and then you are basically instead of some, you cannot use some over here. Let's say if you are using reduce, and you are reducing it to zero. And let's say you are doing integer sum. With this approach, let's just see how much time it is going to take. Let's just run this. See, it took 367 milliseconds right now because a lot of boxing and auto boxing is going on over here with this particular approach, right? So I can run this again if you want. Okay, it's 413 millisecond with this stream approach. But if I'm gonna revert it back to sum, and if I'm gonna use map to long over here, I think this is going to improve the performance. And here you can see it is 64 milliseconds, okay? If you wanna know more about map to long, map to int, how this is going to help you, you can watch this video. But this is okay. With this conclusion, if you're gonna see the 64 millisecond, and for for each is 60 millisecond. It's kind of close, but the stream basically takes a little more time than your enhanced for loop or your for each loop. That is the point you need to keep in mind. But should we avoid stream API? Not at all, right? Look at this code that I have written 
and look at this code that I have written. It looks so clean and so understandable just by looking into the method name and you understand that what you are actually doing over here. If you know Java 8, it looks very, very simple. Isn't it? It's very clean. That's the first thing. And this is giving us the declarative approach of writing code. So we can write things using the Lambda expressions and we can go in a declarative approach rather than the conventional or the traditional approach right over here. Okay, this is one thing. And the stream is not actually always lower. If you want to use parallel stream over here, uh, you can see previously, this was the stream performance. This was the for loop performance. So for loop was better we are considering, but stream is not always lower. What about if you want to activate the parallel stream over here? So if you're going to write parallel stream, you can see a significant increase uh, with this number. So if you're going to run this, Now it is just 31 millisecond and look at this, the previous performances with the for each loop, with the stream, and now look at this performance. If you're gonna run this again, I think you can even go beyond 31. I think it's 26 millisecond. So you go below 31. So you can keep on running this, uh, you know, things more and more and can try to find out a conclusion. You can see it is right now 25 milliseconds. So. Basically, the parallel stream is faster. We know that here we are activating all our CPU core. I'm running this code right now with a Mac mini machine that I do have, and it's the best. It has a lot of CPU cores that it is utilizing and computing these mathematical operations really, really faster than your enhanced for loop and your normal stream API. Okay, so with parallel stream, you can go even beyond that. So if somebody asks you, okay, right now your stream is performing slower, how can you boost the performance? Parallel stream is the option. So stream versus enhanced for loop. If anybody asks you what is faster, then we can safely say, yeah, for loop works a bit faster because there are not much of complexity involved like uh, stream computation. If you're gonna look a simple for each loop and the way it works. So yeah, stream is a bit slower, but if you're gonna use parallel stream, you can actually go beyond the for loop performance as well, okay? So this is one of the benchmarking questions that you might have. So if you find it helpful, let me know and uh, you know put your thoughts in the comments. What do you think about stream and the for each loop? And here is another interview question for you. Give me top two reasons why you need to choose stream over a conventional loop, okay? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you like this kind of video, make sure to give me a thumbs up so that I can keep posting more and more videos like this, all right? I'll see you guys in the next video. Till then, bye-bye, take care, and happy coding.